BRICS Plus might challenge the dominance of current institutions and offer the Global South a stronger role in international affairs when more major emerging markets join the alliance. The 10 BRICS Plus countries, which are significant energy producers and importers, make up half of the world's population and two-fifths of its trade. An additional 12 countries have submitted applications. The bloc is beginning to establish institutions that will have a significant impact on supply chains, international finance, energy trade, and technical research. Global businesses must enhance their ability to seize opportunities and reduce risks associated with BRICS expansion by incorporating geopolitics into their investment plans. The addition of Saudi Arabia and other cash-rich economies, moreover, could expand and diversify the financial resources of BRICS+. Plus. Monetary Policy BRICS Plus countries are keen to develop greater independence from the Western-led international monetary system. Approximately 90% of global foreign exchange transactions are conducted in dollars and flow primarily through U.S. and European banks. Western financial sanctions on Russia underscore the powerful systemic influence the U.S. still holds through Bretton Woods institutions and its central role in the global financial system. Because BRICS Plus includes leading commodity exporters and importers, however, the group can become a conduit for foreign exchange transactions in currencies other than U.S. dollars. The NDB, for instance, has issued about one-fifth of its loans in Chinese yuan. Russia, China, and other BRICS Plus members also aim to promote digital currencies. The group has launched the beta version of a payment app, BRICS Pay, that enables transactions in several non-dollar currencies. That could help nations ease reliance on the U.S. and make them less vulnerable to sanctions and foreign exchange volatility during financial crises. From a governance perspective, BRICS Plus has established the Payment Task Force, the Think Tank Network for Finance, and the Contingent Reserve Arrangement, establishing a pool of reserves that can be used in place of IMF funds to help nations address financial crises. But before we continue, if you're enjoying this briefing, please kindly support this channel by liking and clicking on the subscribe button below to subscribe to this channel and to help YouTube learn of your preferences and enable you receive new video updates every time they are uploaded on this channel. Thank you. Let's get going. Technological Cooperation Space is an overlooked dimension of BRICS Plus collaboration. There is a BRICS Plus Space Cooperation Joint Committee supported by long-standing partnerships between Russia and China and China and Brazil. BRICS Plus has also established a partnership on New Industrial Revolution and a Center for Industrial Competencies. These initiatives aim to spur cooperation and innovation in leading-edge technologies in areas such as intelligent manufacturing, artificial intelligence, digitization, and clean energy. The efforts could help more emerging markets get in on the ground of new technologies, improve their capacity to create intellectual property, and adopt alternative technical standards. Companies should consider response in BRICS plus market strategy, the infrastructure boom, China plus one, risk and compliance, and chip politics. An expanded BRICS presents risks as well as opportunities for business. Companies should anticipate that BRICS plus will develop more formal institutions and agreements in the years ahead and begin planning for such scenarios. Companies should consider action in five areas. Develop a BRICS for BRICS go-to-market strategy. BRICS Plus markets are likely to experience significant growth over the next decade. While the group lacks formal trade and investment agreements, it already has substantial growing intra-BRICS trade. BRICS Plus markets could become valuable gateways for companies seeking to expand to other emerging markets. The success of China-made EVs in BRICS Plus markets is a good example of how companies can customize offerings to reach consumers across the member countries, leverage the infrastructure boom. BRICS Plus is likely to see significant infrastructure investment, which will improve the business environment and connectivity. Transportation, digital communications, energy, and other projects will generate demand for global companies and provide opportunities for investors. The NDB, for example, is funding 15 transportation infrastructure projects across the Indian subcontinent. Adopt China Plus One Many companies are pursuing supply chain strategies that seek to strike a difficult balance. They want to keep leveraging China's many competitive advantages in manufacturing. But they also need to mitigate risks, react to shifts in relative costs, and gain access to government incentives for reshoring or nearshoring. In a more multipolar world, companies could consider building supply chains that can leverage the BRICS plus economies. That could make them more resilient to geopolitical and trade shocks, refine risk and compliance. Economic sanctions such as those stemming from the war in Ukraine and U.S.-China technological competition are heightening legal, operational, and reputational risks for companies. A recent BCG survey of 250 risk and compliance officers found that geopolitical risk is now a top-five concern, up 15 spots from a prior survey. Most sanctions have emanated from Western countries. In the future, 
BRICS countries could coordinate a mutual non-sanctioning posture while also seeking to avoid the Western-led financial system. Multinational companies should account for this scenario when managing their import and export global supply chains, exchange rates, third-party screening, and risk and compliance needs. While companies will need to comply with Western sanctions, they can do so in ways that don't hamper potential BRICS for BRICS value chains. Build geopolitical muscle. During the period of relative peace that followed the end of the Cold War, business leaders had limited need to assert themselves in global political and security issues. These days, geopolitics is increasingly uncertain and volatile. Executives need to prepare for a wide range of scenarios that could impact their operations, supply chains, consumers and brands. They need to factor geopolitics into their capital allocation decisions and strategic planning. Leaders should also build geopolitical sensing capabilities across their business units, functions, and regional managements to balance business efficiency with risk mitigation. Recent years of new geopolitical tensions, economic ambition and instability, trade wars, and a pandemic have clearly brought lasting structural change and challenges to the business landscape we once knew. The growth of the BRICS Plus shows that after decades of strong economic development, emerging markets are now ready for a larger role in the world order, one that better reflects their interests. Companies that adapt to this movement will be more likely to thrive in an evolving era of multipolar competition. That's where we wrap things up for the time being. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.